Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making 3D logos based off a drawing. Now this is a continuation of the hard surface modeling and get good at Blender series. And I'll be going through some different techniques about how you can make this model. There'll be a really simple, easy way, which doesn't have great topology, but it does the job. And then I'll go into more detailed methods. So if you ever want to adapt the shape slightly, or maybe sharpen edges and things like that, then you can kind of take the logo to the next level. This is a beginner based tutorial, but you must have some experience of Blender because I won't be going through the whole interface. And it's a great idea to have done some of my beginner courses, all of which you can find in the playlist section of this channel. I'll also post some in the description. And also in the description, there's a great course from CG Boost. That's a paid for course, but it's very in depth and detailed and I can thoroughly recommend it. Okay, so let's begin. The first thing we'll need to do is to get our reference image in. You'll find the link to the reference image that I'm using in the description, but you can use pretty much any image, but obviously the more complicated, the more detail you'll have to make and the more chance you have of making mistakes along the way. So here's my wolf logo and I can click and drag that into my scene. And that creates an empty. If we look up here in our outliner, you can see that it's an empty and I can hide it and make it visible up there if I need to. Now it's obviously the wrong way around at the moment and we can just press Alt G, which removes any grab or movement and Alt R to remove any rotation. And then if we go to top view with seven on our numpad, we get a nice overhead view. Now this is a very rough drawing that I've done and we're going to smarten it up a bit and we're going to follow the outline with our shapes. So you can of course follow along with me or you can try and make this model yourself. If you want to do that, pause the video now and you can restart if you want to see how I've done it. Now for this, we can actually use the default cube. So I'll click on the default cube. I'll go into edit mode with tab on my keyboard or you can go to edit mode up here with everything selected. If you haven't got everything selected, you can press A to select all, press Alt M. So Alt M will merge and we can merge it at the center. That will give us one tiny point at the center. Now in order for this to work, you must be on vertex mode, which is one on your keyboard, or you can press this button up here. That way we have this one vertex selected. If you're on one of the other modes, you won't be able to select it or move it. So let's move this into a position. So G to grab and move it to the start of our shape here. Now I can extrude this by pressing E to extrude and pulling it out or you can actually press control right click, assuming that you've got the default setup for Blender. I'm using Blender 2.82, and you can see I'm just following the curve of my logo, and I'm spacing my points out fairly evenly. That will help us later on. So just follow around your curve and get the rough shape. Don't have too many points, otherwise that will just make your life harder later on. So just fairly even and about this far apart. We can add more points later on. So control right click or E to extrude and then grab it out. Now we've been all the way around one side. When you're coming back the other way, try and even them up. So keep spacing them the same distance apart and have roughly equal amounts on either side. It doesn't matter too much at this stage because again, we'll tidy up as we go along. The last one, you'll need to have them both selected with shift left click and then F to fill. Usually it's join, J to join, but F to fill if there's no face there. So with all of them selected, we can press F to fill and we have created our shape. So if I hide our empty, you can see we've got the basic shape of our logo. Now, if you want it really simplistic, you can just then select your face in face mode, E to extrude and pull it upwards. And you've got a very basic logo and that should suffice if you're a complete beginner to this and want to keep this nice and easy. Now bear in mind, if you're using this method, you'll probably want to make a few more cuts and adjustments. So if I undo this and go back into edit mode and go back into vertex mode, I can, if there's not enough curves, back to top view with seven on my numpad, you'll probably want to tidy up a bit. In some places you may want to add a bit more detail. If you ever want to do that, you can select a group of vertices just by shift box selecting and right click subdivide and that will add vertices in the middle and then you can just sort of adjust them and move them about to fit. I'm going to undo that because that's not the way I'm going to do it. I think there's a better way, but it does get a bit more complicated. So with your face selected, you can press I to inset and that will create a whole new load of vertices on the inside. So you move your mouse up and down slightly. If you hold shift, it will move in smaller increments and we only want a tiny bit of an inset. Can you see over in the corner here, when I push it too far, it overlaps itself. So watch out for that. So try and get a reasonable inset where there's not too much overlapping. So if I go to about here, 
I can then come in and grab this vertex that's slightly out of place and pull it back into position. So somewhere around there. But we can see we're going to have issues around these tight corners. That's a topology issue and one which we can smarten up. So now that we've got this inset, that will help us in our topology flow because we've got this edge flow going around the outside. And that's really important when it comes to adding sharp edges or subdivision surface modifiers to things that you've got a flow around your edges that will help you. Now, don't follow along with this bit, but I just want to show a point. If I were to extrude these faces out and try and make it thick at the moment and add some sort of subdivision surface modifier to make it nice and smooth, it took a while because it was struggling and it was unable to complete the task. And you can see this big mess here. So I'll undo that. The problem is this huge end gone in the middle, and that's a face with lots and lots of sides or edges. We therefore need to divide this up. Now what we're aiming for, and you may have heard before, is we're aiming for a quad base mesh. So a mesh built up of rectangles. So what we'll need to do is go around our model and try and make that happen. So back into top view, and let's delete this face and come in and see if we can't tidy it up a bit. Now remember we want quads, so I can add a loop cut here with Control R, and then I can easily make a quad at the bottom here. Now there's a nice quick way to make quads. You select one edge right at the end, and you press F to fill. And then if I keep pressing F to fill, you can see it filling up with quads. Now obviously we've got an issue when it comes to this point. I can add a quad here, which works, but it's not great topology. I'm not going to go too far with the topology. I'm not going to make it super clean because it can take quite a long time to explain these things. And you can actually get away if you haven't got a complete understanding of topology by adding a triangle in here if necessary. And the reason you're able to do that is because we have this edge flow around the outside. The subdivision surface modifier will still work with slightly bad topology in the middle here. Now I'm going to improve the topology myself just so you can see some improvements and generally what you're looking for in topology. And the best way to do that here is probably to add an edge loop here and here, and then go to vertex mode and extrude an edge out there. So now when I go to edge mode, F and F, we've got a smoother topology going along here, and I can start filling it in here as well. I'm going to make one here, so F, and then we'll need to do a quad here, so Control R, do a loop cut, pull it up there, and I'll grab this so there's a bit of a curve, and then just fill this face in here. Again, don't worry if you're not following this bit. As long as you have this middle section filled in, even if you've got a few triangles, you'll be okay. So at this point, I can't just press F all the way through. I'm going to have to extrude this point here. I can probably get rid of this one here until we get to this point. If you ever want to get rid of an edge like this, delete and then dissolve edges. Now let's go to edge mode and fill these in with F and this one here. And now at the end here, they're quite thin gaps. So we can have quads in here by selecting two and then filling them in. I might have to delete one of these edge loops. So let's delete this one, dissolve edges, and then fill it up this way. But we've got a problem here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So like I say, this can get a little bit complicated when it comes to the topology. If you're struggling to understand it, select all the edges and press F and have a big end gone. That should be okay with this minimal distance between them. But the easiest way to sort this one out is to grab this edge here, extrude it out, and you can probably see now that we've got one, two, three there. Now again, this isn't the most amazing topology because we've got what's called a pole here, which is a vertex that has less or more than four edges going into it. And ideally, you shouldn't really go above five, but in this case, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. It will work but it may cause very minor pinching that you probably won't notice and we can easily cover up. So we continue around our shape, filling in, and then when we get to tricky points, we just have a bit of decision making to do. This is a very sharp angle here and sometimes it's best to avoid those if you're doing good topology. So we can actually use the knife tool this time. So I'll cut down from here to here. So press K for the knife tool, click on an edge, left click on an edge to create a vertex. And when you've finished, press enter and then I'll bring this inward slightly and I'll make a cut here as well. So it's a bit smoother and cleaner. I can get rid of this face that I don't need anymore. Okay, so if we go from the bottom end again 
and just see where we're at. And then I can fill in here and fill in here. Again, there's a pole that's a bit naughty there, but we can probably get away with it. At points like this, we might want another pole so we can again extrude out from here and fill in some faces but we probably want it narrow again here so I'll fill in that face by selecting these two edges and pressing F and then going up that way probably want another cut there so I'll pause it there for now and let's see how we're going to tidy up this area here so with one on my keyboard I can E to extrude this point out and just have a look where we're going F to fill this one in so select two vertices and press F and then let's just fill these in F F F to fill and we've got one slight problem here. We've got F to fill and F to fill and we've got a triangle, the dreaded triangle. Now again, it doesn't matter too much because it's on a flat surface. So if you want to put a triangle, that's fine. But have a think how you might get out of this sort of triangle situation. Well, we can actually use this to our advantage slightly. If we look out at our shape, we've got quite a nice rounded section here that could be more rounded. So if I press Control R, in fact, I'll delete this face first, select this face, delete faces, and then control R. And then I can grab this out slightly. Now I can select this face and press F and F again. And we have our quad base mesh still. Again, I want to stress that this isn't amazing topology, but it will work like this. And you have got a quad based mesh. But if you are trying to make nice clean topology, trying to minimize this pole here or the amount of poles is the best solution. At that point, it does become a bit more detailed, but you'll see at the end, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference in this case. So let's continue around our mesh. I'll just add another loop cut here so we can continue and press F to come down to the base here. I'll move this one down. It does help to have them in line and not these sharp edges like this. I'll press F to fill this one in and F to fill that one in. And that worked out fairly nicely. I'll undo that and I'll just create another one here. That's okay. So F again here. Now it might be the case that I need a loop cut in here. And I can just go around filling these areas in. I'll do another one here because I think that will be a bit tidier. And there's one last one at the end there, which is a triangle. There's a couple of ways you can clean that up, but I'm going to just fill it in, in this case, just to show you that a triangle is okay. It's not ideal, but it's okay. So we have our shape and now it's pretty much full of quads and pretty much okay in terms of topology. So now let's try and add that subdivision surface modifier. We can see that it works okay. Let's up the resolution. I think I had mine on three. And now we can select our whole mesh and extrude it out. And we've got the beginnings of our logo. I'll just right click and shade smooth. If you want sharp edges, now we can select that edge loop round there. We can press N on our keyboard and go up to item and there's a mean crease that works with our subdivision surface modifier and will create a crease. You can also crease these areas up as well. So grab that edge there, just make a note of how far you're creasing it. So 0.3 in this case, and you can go around doing similar to the, all the edges if you like to give it that crease and sharpness. Because we have a subdivision surface modifier on, it should smooth out most of our curves, but you might find some places such as in here where it's a little bit out. So wireframe mode, select them all, and just move them into position. If you ever need to sharpen any of these areas up, and there's more than one edge flow going around, so we can't just grab this edge and sharpen it, we can actually just move them closer together. So if I grab that edge going down there, I'll go back to solid mode so you can see it a bit easier, and then GG to grab an edge slide, sliding them together will create a sharper edge, as you can see there. And that's why they're called supporting loops because they support each other to create those sharp edges. So if I bring back my empty, there is another bit here, this sort of flow to do, but that's fairly straightforward and works in much of a similar way to the other one. So have a go at that as well and see what you come up with. So the last bit now then is a bit of shading. So let's go across to the shading tab, remove my empty and let's press the full stop key to come in nice and close. The way I made my metallic material is fairly complicated, but you can make a nice easy one with a low roughness and metallic all the way to one. And you've got a lovely metal material. You can change the color to a more goldy color or maybe a bluey silver one. And it looks lovely. 
Now the very last thing that you might find useful is to be able to have it on a transparent background with a bit of a shadow. That's nice and straightforward as well. If we press Shift A to add a plane and scale it up a bit and just make sure it's underneath. So grab in the Z axis and make sure it's underneath. I could go to side view to light it up perfectly. And there we go. Now notice I haven't sharpened the bottom edge up. So you might want to do that as well from your object. So anything that's purple has one of those mean creases on it, but my bottom edge hasn't. So it looks a little bit blobby at the moment, but yours is going to look lovely. So in order to create that shadow, but a transparent background, you do need to be in cycles. So the render engine across here, change it to cycles. And let's go to the render tab. Now, of course, how quickly this renders depends on your graphics card or processor. I'm changing mine to the graphics card. And notice it doesn't look so nice because we haven't got an HDRI in the background. So you need to go to world tab and put your own HDRI here. Shift A to add texture, environment texture, and hook that up. It should go all purple because you haven't got an environment texture in there yet. So we need to open one up. You can find some nice ones on HDRI Haven. I'm just going to choose any random one. Here's my folder of HDRIs. So I'll choose that one, open it up, and suddenly we've got these nice reflections. The only problem is it appears in the background. We can go across to the render tab and down to film and transparent to get rid of it out of the background, but we've still got our plane in the middle. What's great about this is that we have some nice shadows, but what if I want to put this into some other background? Well, you can click on your plane, click on the object properties and down to visibility. Under visibility, you have shadow catcher. And when I tick that, it actually makes the plane transparent, but keeps the shadows. But that's only available in cycles. The last thing you might want to do is to actually make sure the plane isn't visible in this reflection. And you can just untick the glossy for that. And now it's only reflecting the HDRI in the background. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too complicated for you. Again, do look at my playlists for lots of free courses. And remember, there's my website, which has the courses in sequential order. So one after another, so increasing difficulty. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know how you get on in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.